Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the best Ubuntu flavor, in my opinion. And that's really what all this is, is that this is my opinion, and I don't think that if somebody asks you what the best Ubuntu flavor out there is, and you give them a different answer than what I'm about to say, that you'd be wrong. Because really there are no bad Ubuntu flavors. They're all good to varying degrees. Now, my least favorite out there, and I'm just going to put this out there, I think everybody who knows me would know this, my least favorite is the main version that runs on GNOME and has its own layout and stuff. And I have many reasons why the main flavor is just my least favorite. I don't like GNOME all that much. I don't particularly care for the layout of Ubuntu. I've never really have. Uh, I, I think it's kind of stale. All these things. Those are my opinions. And if tomorrow morning the AUR and Arch Linux and every other distribution out there was completely gone and I had to use Ubuntu or a flavor of Ubuntu, I wouldn't pick the main one. I would actually pick Kubuntu. Now, there are many reasons why I particularly like Kubuntu. Most of them having to do with its use of the KDE Plasma desktop. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now this right here is what Kubuntu looks like out of the box. I've done literally nothing to it. And this is the LTS version, so you're not getting the most up-to-date packages and stuff, but it's very stable and very well put together, and it's highly enjoyable to use. Now, one of the reasons why I think Kubuntu is so great is because it's great for two classes of users. If you're a brand new Linux user, Kubuntu and KD Plasma are great steps for you because right out of the box you can use it. And it's the same thing with if you use the GNOME version or if you use XFCE or Mate or whatever. It's very usable just like those. And you can go through and just install your applications and get about your day. Where KD Plasma and Kubuntu Excel are when you get past that new user stage and want to start customizing things, KDE is probably the most extensible and customizable desktop out there, bar none. I don't think that there's a single one out there that even comes close to comparing. Uh, Mate and XFCE may become the closest, but even then they're not nearly as extensible as what Plasma is. And that's the reason why I like it is because you can go through and be a new user for as long as you need to be a new user for. You're learning Linux, you're learning how to install packages, you're learning how to navigate the file system and the terminal and all these things. And KDE, for the most part, will just get out of your way. You'll never have to open up the settings panel unless you really want to. And even if you do have to, while it can be confusing and overwhelming, I do believe that the search box functionality in the settings thing is worthwhile. But I don't really think that most new users will even ever open up the new set, the settings panel until they've gotten to a point where they're more comfortable with the desktop environment itself. And once they are to that stage, there's just a tons of things that they can do. So if you open this up as a new user, you're probably going to be a little lost. But I think once you've used KDE for a little while and used Linux, you'll be able to navigate very easily. So, I mean, it's not as if this is the most complicated or mismanaged settings panel out there in the world. It's very well labeled. So you have the appearance section, you have a workspace section, personalization, network, hardware, and system administration. There's nothing confusing about that. Now, it's obviously when you get into these little categories that it can get really wonky. Because, like, if you go to workspace behavior and desktop effects, say, most of the time, you're not going to know what any of these things do. Now, obviously, it's easy to find out because a lot of these things actually have, like, little videos that will show you what they do. So this will actually show you exactly what the effect means. And, you know, even if that video is stylized like it looks like it came from KD4 it's still useful information so that's something that KDE does really well is that it has great documentation so if you get online and you need help 
it has great documentation, but a lot of that stuff is actually built right into the desktop environment. So you can go through and, you know, not all these have videos, but a lot of them do. So, I mean, like this one here, Slotting Pop-Ups pop has another video. And, you know, it's just really cool that it does that. So even if you get a little bit overwhelmed, I think that KDE does the best job of helping you figure things out. But more than that... Even if you get overwhelmed, I I just feel like KDE allows you to go through and learn things better than like GNOME or whatever because none of it feels hacky. This all this stuff all feels like it should be here. Yes, it's complicated. Yes, it can be overwhelming, but you don't have to go through and install some crazy thing that calls calls itself tweak tools in order to actually change the theme that you want to change to. Or install an extension in order to get your dock the way it wants to be. It's just, it's here, it works. You don't have to go through and jump through any extra hoops in order to do the things you want to do. Now, some of that might be my bias against GNOME showing. It's entirely possible. You know, I don't like GNOME, so the way GNOME does things tends to come out and affect me negatively. That's a completely fair thing to say. I think more, though, KDE just endears itself to me because it has so many options, but also teaches people how to use them better than what GNOME is, and it's just all one cohesive package. It doesn't really feel like anything is like tacked onto it as an afterthought or that it's taboo in order to do it. Like GNOME goes through and makes it feel like it's something naughty that you're doing when you want to change a theme or install a theme or even do an extension. I mean, extensions have gotten better because they include the extensions app now. You know, it used to be you have to install GNOME tweaks in order to actually do extensions. And it, like I said, it makes it feel like you're doing something forbidden because it's not something that comes installed out of the box. GNOME expects you to use GNOME the way GNOME is supposed to be used. And it's the same thing with Ubuntu. Like, they expect you to use their desktop environment, the way it comes shipped out of the box. And like I said, it's a little bit better now that they, they've they gone through and shipped that extensions app so that extensions don't feel like a, you know, a third party, a third edition or whatever. But it still feels that way. Whereas with KDE and Plasma and Kubuntu, everything is here for you. And while it may be a little bit more confusing... As long as you're willing to explore and learn and stuff and make mistakes, you're going to be perfectly fine. And I think when it when we boil it down, the real reason why I like Kubuntu is because I, one of the main things I believe fervently about Linux is that if you're not willing to learn and explore and change things and get your hands dirty a little bit, you're never going to fully experience what Linux can do. If you just sit behind the stock GNOME slash Ubuntu desktop environment and get your work done, that's a fine way of using Linux, but you're not going to be as well-rounded as a Linux community member or a Linux user as you would be if you experienced other things. And I feel like you experience more when you use something like Ubuntu. And even if you get into Ubuntu and you go through and you experience everything and you find that you don't like it, you still have that experience of getting into the nitty gritty details of customizing a desktop environment. Whereas you might not get that experience if you start on standard Ubuntu, because like I said, that is meant to be used as it comes. So final thoughts. I think that the reason why I think Kubuntu is the best is because it uses KDE, obviously, but more because it, it gives any user, no matter their level of experience, the opportunity to actually get into a more complicated, customizable system than what you'd get if you used something else. And I think that that's a great thing to experience as a Linux user, because if you, like I said before, if you don't experience those things, if you just settle for what standard Ubuntu gives you, you're really truly missing out. And that, I mean, like I said, that's my opinion. 
and and there's really nothing truly wrong with just using vanilla Ubuntu, uh, but it just feels like if you're here to experience Linux and learn as much as possible about it, then I would suggest getting into Kubuntu and giving it a go. You may not like it. You may find that it's too overwhelming, too complicated, has too many settings, whatever. I mean, there are any number of valid criticisms of KDE and Plasma that would drive many people away. But you'd still have that experience that would help you later on when you choose a different desktop environment or maybe you choose a window manager or whatever. You know, those are all things that are important, I think, for every Linux user to experience. So, before I go, I want to talk a little bit about the camera situation on my channel. So, uh, as you know, I've been having webcam issues. <laughs> the camera that I have on my second monitor, which I'm looking at right now, which is the reason why it's the camera that I'm most used to looking at. And that's the reason why my eyes are, you know, not looking at the right camera. So I should be looking over here. But I'm really looking over here and I keep forgetting. Uh, I might switch those around tomorrow. Is because this camera over here is trash. It's utter garbage. And I did manage to get my Logitech one, which is about 10 years old, to finally show 1080p. So I think I'm just going to transfer these over and get rid of the one that's utter garbage. And throw it as far away into the trash as possible. And I will, but I just wanted to say that the reason why I've been looking at the wrong camera, the whole, this whole video or looking down really is because I'm not used to the camera placement yet. It'll take me, even now I'm looking over here because I'm looking at OBS. That's what I want to look at. I want to look into the camera at my face, but it's not working. <laughs> Anyways, um, they had nothing to do with the video, um, but thanks for listening to a little bit Inside Baseball. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can also follow us on Facebook at the LinuxCast. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, very recently, we've started giving... Look at the right camera, Matt. We've started giving all of our level 2, 3, 4, and 5 patrons early access to our videos. Not just the podcast, but some of the videos that actually go up in the channel. So like this one here, you'll get uh, several hours early, probably about 12 hours early. And it goes up before YouTube, obviously. So that means, you know, you just have an access to it on Patreon before everybody else does. So if you're interested in getting our videos a little early, patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.